Hello everyone, I'm TJ Yogi and welcome back to part 14 of our coin collecting tutorial. Right, in this tutorial, so I think I'm going to spread this over the next three actually, we're going to be doing our achievements. Last tutorial we did our load game, which does the times died. And we've got our little achievements here to show how many achievements we've unlocked. But in this one we're going to do a few parts on how to do the achievements tutorial. Now with that said, we need to jump right in. Now the first script we need to create will be an achievement variables script. And this is where we're going to be creating all the variables for our achievements. So the achievement name, the icon, uh, if it's locked or unlocked, everything ready. And so what we're going to do come in here and I can tell you right now we're not going to need mono behavior for this one at all and we are not going to need these either what we are going to need is a few it's a few things really so what we're going to do is going to uh, public string achievement name uh, public int achievement id uh, public string achievement achievement description uh, public string achievement icon name uh, before the icon name now I'm going to do a public texture 2d achievement icon. And now down here we're going to create a public enum so enumerable and we're going to need to know if the achievement is locked or unlocked as a visual thing. Do you know how on some uh, uh, achievements list you have uh, in, the, in the corner or something it says locked or unlocked? So I'm just going to say achievement status, achievement status, and then uh, locked, unlocked. You need to put the comma here and leave it out on the last one. The comma denotes that there's another one after. If you leave the comma off the last one, then the, the script knows that there's not going to be another one. So it stops looking. Um, and then uh, up here, yeah, public achievements status. See, so we've got it here now. We're just going to call it achievement status. But lowercase a, not an uppercase. If you do an uppercase one, you will f have an error. It needs to be lowercase. So it needs to be separate from the name here. Can't be exactly the same, which is why I've put a uh, little lowercase a. Now under here, we're going to create a public achievement variables, and then what we're going to do is we're going to create a few. So basically, this is just going to denote saying that. Uh, I, I, I'll show you. So I'm going to do string, um, call it a name. Uh, int call it a id string a a description string a 
Uh, string a i name. The reason I'm saying AI name is I'm gonna it's achievement icon name, and then I'm gonna do a G. Whoops, need a comma after that. Otherwise, it won't work. And then I'm gonna call this achievement status, and I'm gonna call it a status. Then come down here. And this is where we're going to start typing things. So, uh, the best way to do it here is achievement name is equal to a name. And we basically just got to do this for all of them. So, uh, achievement ID is equal to a i a i d achievement description is equal to a description uh, a achievement name icon name is equal to a i name we miss any we've got a name a i d a description AI name and then the achievement icon we will do uh, achievement icon is equal to and this will be see the way we're going to do this is I learned this a little while ago is we're going to have all the icons for the achievements in the resources folder and then we're just going um, and unity what it looks in there so what we're going to do is do a resources, res, not resolution, resources dot load, not load all, load, and then we're going to put a texture 2D in there, because our icons are texture 2Ds, which we've put up here. Texture 2D, and then this is going to be the subfolder that we're going to have. I'm just going to say... Achievement icons forward slash. Then I'm gonna say plus. I'm gonna say AI name. So basically, what it does is for each achievement that we have in here, when it finds the achieve, it's looking in the achievement icons folder, which is in the resources folder, which we will create in a minute, and it's looking for the achievement AI name, and then I'll use the icon for that for the name. And then we need achievement state, not that one. Achievement status is equal to a status. And then just so we don't, we can have some empties. Public and achievement variables. Which we're going to leave blank. The reason for this is this is a constructor. This is constructing all this. This is empty. So if we want to have like a blank uh, achievement area because we've not actually put any achievement in there. Because what we're going to be doing at the moment is we're going to be having achievements in our list that are not actually in our list just yet. Um, it makes sense. It's basically we have a blank icon covering every achievement slot we have, and then when we unlock an achievement, an achievement will be replaced in one of the slots. This um, allows us to create some empty slots, and this is the slots that we're going to have populated. But this is not going to work unless we do a system dot serializable. Reason for this is if we just took this off here and then we run it and added it and it would basically have only one entry in the inspector if we have it serializable each one of these becomes a separate field in the inspector all of them
Um, I might actually. Uh, I'll leave this on for now. I'm just going to take it off later as a. Uh, it's basically a way of showing. That way, uh, you can see exactly what's wrong and what's different. Uh, not entirely sure it'll work now, but I'll comment that out. And I can test it now. See if I put those achievement variables on the main camera. Oh, yeah, I can't do that. Whoops. Um, yeah. I can't do that anyway. Hmm. Oh well, uh, we're not going to need that anyway, but yeah, just trust, believe me when I say you need this system serializable in here. Now what we need to do is also we need to create another script. And we're going to create a new script, we're going to we're gonna call this Achievement Database. Now in our level what we do is we can create an empty call it achievement database and then what we want to do is we want to also add another tag so this new tag I'm going to have is called I'm going to call it achievement database for the tag and then I'm going to apply the tag to the achievement database the reason we're doing going to do this is in in our main uh, menu script we're going to look for the game object with the tag achievement database and then get the script from there. So what we're going to do is add this achievement database to there, and then we open up this achievement database, and I we're going to need this amount of behavior because we are going to use that. So. I don't think we need the update function though. No, we don't. We'll be doing everything in the start. Um, we will be creating lists, so we need to use the using system dot collections dot generic. We will be using collections generic. That way, we can actually use lists, ordered lists, uh, all that sort of stuff. So uh, you'll see what I mean in a second. Actually, you'll see exactly what I mean right now. So I want to do a public achieve the list. Let's see. We've got a list here, I and mean, this this is achievement variables equals a new list achievement variables. I believe I just did that wrong. Oh yeah, I know what I did wrong. Achieve, I didn't give it a name. That's probably, yeah, there we go. Now it's got a name. Now what we're going to do is, the reason why we added this in, is because we're going to actually start creating our achievements now. Um, so what I'm going to do, is for now, I'm going to see here we've got the resources folder. I'm going to right click create folder call it achievement icons and then on my desktop I have achievement images achievement icons and then I'm gonna drag all my achievement icons in there and then I'm gonna say the Legacy GUI, going to say point, true color, 64, apply. The reason for that is they're never going to go uh, higher than 64 in resolution, so they don't see any point. I believe, yeah, they are 60 by 60, so I think every icon I'm going to be having is 60 by 60, so there's no stretched images. So now I've got the achievement icons in here. I know there's one called Six Foot Fall, Almighty, then Hidden Achievement. So I'm going to be needing these names. 
Now the reason I'm going to need these names is the icons that were used for the achievements are going to be used by these names. Uh, you'll see now actually. So what we need to do is we need to use achieve dot add and then what we need to do <coughs> is say a new achievement variables and then what we're going to do is as you see here if you see here it says we need a a name this is what we created before in our achievement variables a name so you need the achievement name the achievement id achievement description achievement icon name and then we need the status see if it's locked or unlocked <coughs> so what we're going to do is I'm just going to hit enter just for formatting sake uh, the achievement name is a string so it's a string the id is an int so id 0 description is a string the name is a string and the achievement see I've already got it here achievement variables dot achievement status dot locked and then we close it out see this is basically the standard layout for every achievement we're going to be doing so the name I'm going to say is a hidden a hidden achievement and then is looking for a description this is a hidden achievement this is a hidden achievement and underneath it's looking for the name of the actual icon so I do believe my icon was called hidden achievement yes hidden achievement we're not done, that's our first achievement done, believe it or not. Now what we need to do is what we can easily do is just copy this. And then go down, put another one in. And then what we can easily do is say... Because this is going to be number one. This is not the achievement there, though. This is a uh, welcome to coin collector. It's not going to be a hidden achievement. I'm going to say thank you for playing coin coin collector. It's locked, so I'm going to use a hidden achievement icon for locked. The reason for this is when you unlock it. So if you look at say Steam or Xbox or whatever, they have a uh, a standard icon that they use to denote that something's locked so you can't actually see the picture of the achievement until you unlock it I'm going to use the same principle here so I'm going to copy this and then paste it here now this is going to be have the ID of 2 see every achievement has its own ID but however this here I'm going to say it's unlocked this is going to be welcome to coin collector still and instead of it being a hidden achievement welcome to coin collector I believe that's what my achievement is called welcome to coin collector yep that's exactly what it's called and you can do this for each achievement you have I have oops I have one two four more so I've been doing this for four more so what we can easily do is come down We're going to call this uh, Mr. Banks. Has the ID of 3 and the ID of 4. And call this Mr. Banks as well. Mm. Collect 100 coins. Collect 100 coins. And then I'm just going to just do a quick few more quickly.
and then we're done. <coughs> so I have a locked and an unlocked version of each. See this one here, six of four, die. It's quite simple. I'm not going to have these achievements that are insanely hard, at least for now. But you, you just add to this list, just make sure you've got a locked and unlocked version of it. Now with the achievement database done, and the achievement variables done, before I edit, end in the tutorial, I will be going on the achievement borders, and I will be copying these, putting them into our GUI in the textures, and then I'm just gonna apply them. And in the next tutorial video, we will be creating the whole system in our main menu to display these achievements. Hey, I've been T Junkie. Thank you for watching. I shall see you next time. Bye bye.